Hey guys, Zelonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you my latest updated 4231 custom tactics. I'll be walking you through all the tactics, the instructions, how you set it up, and then the type of players you want and how you'll use this formation in game to get you more wins on FIFA 23. Are you fed up of getting out teamed on FIFA? Want that God squad that you've always dreamed of? Check out MMO EXP and use code ZELL at checkout for a 5% discount. Check out the link below. MMO EXP, the best place to buy coins. Okay, so here we are. This is my current team. Changed ever so slightly by Adin Valverde. Militao recently. Very popular um, players to have in your team, to be fair. There's a lot of very good Real Madrid players this year. Um, I've been testing out lots of different formations. My favourite formation still so far this year is probably one of three. The 4 3 2 one, the 4 triple 2, or the 4 3 3 fifth variation. The 4 2 3 1 that we're going to talk about today is very effective, very good, very frustrating to play against. And if a formation's annoying to play against, that normally means it's pretty effective. If you don't like what your opponent's doing, that probably means they're doing something right for the most part. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this formation just in terms of the style of it, but it's very good, hence I'm doing a video about it. I just prefer formations with two strikers that are a bit more attacking, but when we go look at the actual formation, so you can see here we've got two variations set up. I have an ultra defensive and ultra attacking that I've talked about quite a few times in other videos. We have a more defensive and more attacking version of the 4-2-3-1 that is the focus of today's video. When we look at the actual formation, the strengths of it are fairly obvious. It's very well spread out. Naturally, that means it's very easy to keep the ball in this formation. You have options all over the pitch. You can create some, to be fair, very nice attacking patterns in this formation. It's just a little bit hard when people start to get behind the ball. You do have to kind of counter-attack on this game at pace. So one of the weaknesses of this formation is that its counter-attack is not quite as good. You don't have the two strikers up front or you don't have a wingers. It's still good at counter-attacking at times with the Lamb and Ram, but it's not quite as effective as some of the other formations. It's very, very good defensively, this formation. A few years ago, I think it was like FIFA 19 or 20. I think it was 20. They made it so you wasn't able to um, get your strikers to come back on defense properly. So 4 2 3 one's really good because the midfielders come back, so you basically get an extra man behind the ball in this um, formation. So it's very hard to break... A good player down in this formation if you can play safe not make any stupid mistakes not dive in control your midfield cut out the obvious stuff it's very hard to concede in this formation um so if you're looking for a very good fundamental um formation that gives you all the basics of fifa is good at keeping the ball very hard to break down can have some nice attacking pants the 4 2 3 one is probably for you in terms of the type of players you want um the striker is pretty obvious. Five star, five star is a big plus. You definitely need at least four star, four star though. I think in this formation, it relies on the striker more than nearly any other formation in the game. Simply put, it's the one striker. You need your striker to be very good. The cam's very important as well. They link everything together. If you're not using your cam properly in this formation, then you're not getting the most out of it. The cam is the gap between the striker and the CDMs. He links the um, lamb and ram. So you need a cam. Ideally, who can be a bit like the striker. Pace isn't quite as important, but you want someone as well who's good at passing. They have to be good on the ball as well because they're going to be turning in tight spaces to try and create for you. The lamb and ram, that's where pace is essential. Valverde is not someone you'd play here. He's just a makeshift for me as I was testing the formation out again. For the CDMs, I have one who is good at defending. Ideally, your CDMs are going to be good at everything, which mine are. But this one's the more defensive-minded one, Variety. He's great on the ball still. He can still pass. I, want, I don't want CDMs who are just lumps who can't do anything. And then the other CDMs, the one who's good at going forward. Being good at going forward is important on the game because it allows you to open up other things and means you have more attacking threat going forward. And then the fullbacks in this formation honestly don't really have to do a lot going forward. They just, you just want them to be decent on the ball to be able to pass it on. Um, you just want full back centre backs, very strong, quick, decent on the ball, all that type of stuff. Let's get into the actual tactic. So the actual tactic, quite simple, but I think it's very effective. Balanced defensive style. I don't think you want to go lower than balanced. I think 
drop back is actually that good this year, to be honest. Fairly low width. It's quite a compact formation when it's defended, so you don't want to lose the strength of that. In this one, in the more defensive-minded one, because it's more passive and you're almost trying to just be very hard to break down, I don't go auto-offside traps. That is, if you're playing new gen, you can go 72 depth, and from there you get auto-offside traps, which are very hard for people to actually get past. On old gen, I've been told it's not actually a thing, but the way that this plays here, I like to have 45 depth, be hard to break down, get my men behind the ball. People are really going to struggle against that. So you've got a choice. If you want to be a bit more aggressive, you can go 72 depth and play the auto offside traps. But I'm for my more defensive variation based on how the formation players go in that. For the build-up play, balanced and direct passing is a great combo. It's very good with a striker at pinning this defender's back and allowing you to get more options around them. Um, I go quite high width in this formation because I want to stretch teams with a lemon ram to make more space in the middle. You're going to have to create more space in the middle because your striker and cam um, are a little bit more um, isolated, I guess, compared to some formations. They're not too bad in terms of that, but because you don't have two strikers do one two between each other, you need more space to open up, so you need to be able to go out wide. Players in box, pretty simple. Striker, stay central, stay forward. Because he's the one striker, I want him to stay in the middle. Come back on defense on all of my free cams. I put get into the box on both the outside cams because I want them to make runs in behind and stretch teams. Even in the more defensive variation, I want them making those runs in behind. Then I put stay on edge of box on the cam to try help him to link everything together. You could go balance cross and runs. The more attacking CDM has balanced um, attack. The other one has stay back. They both have cut passing lanes to cover centre, but the more defensive I stay back, I want him to stay back and anchor the team a bit. And then all of these have stay back. The keeper, I don't think it really does anything, so it doesn't really matter. For the more attacking variation, we are going press after possession loss. This is what I tend to do in most formations. This is the one where you're not losing the game by loads. It's one, maybe two max. And there's still plenty of time to go. So you just want to up the ante, up the press, make it a little bit harder for your opponent. Um, this does that. 75 depth gives you the auto offside traps. Um, 72 does, but we've got it on 75 here. We've lowered the width slightly. We want to be a little bit more able to have more men through the middle. Players in box has gone up slightly. We're just trying to be a little bit more attacking. In terms of the instructions, not a lot changes. We go getting behind on the striker. We want to be able to make more runs in behind soon as we're winning the ball. The cam I put on balance cross and run, so he's going to make a bit more into the box. We keep the exact same on everyone else. You could, if you wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, no, I won't go join the attack, that's too much probably, but you could go balanced on the fullbacks. However, I still don't think you really need to in this. I don't think this is the best formation at pressing and getting back into a game. There are others, but some people really do just like how this formation plays. If you want to still use it even when you're losing, it is a better way of... Um, adapt the formation i guess to make it a little bit more aggressive a little bit better at pressing overall <coughs> the 4 2 3 1 fantastic very balanced it's about as balanced as you get on fifa like i say it's just not my favorite but i've tried it out it's very effective um, it's very good at frustrating your opponent you'll be much more defensively sound if you use this formation properly <coughs> there you go guys Hopefully this video has helped you out. Appreciate you guys as always watching my content. Appreciate the support and love on the channel lately, especially when I've been a bit more ill in hospital with throat infections. Um, hope you have a great weekend. As always, keep it spicy. Peace.